Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and aloha. This is Master Paul tuning in from Honolulu, Hawaii on Thursday, April 19th. 18th, 19th. I think it's 19th. Anyway, I just checked the date and it slipped right by my mind that fast. So it is 9 a.m. here in Hawaii. You might see a little bit of tiredness in my eyes still as I had a late night last night. But all is well. I'm very happy to be joining you today. And today, for those that saw the um, pre-post, today we're going to be focusing on what is the power of your soul. There is <laughs> volumes and volumes of books that can be written on this subject by itself. <clears throat> but today I'm going to be focusing on some specific bullet points, if you will, and kind of expanding on those so that we have a greater understanding and appreciation of the power and significance of our soul. <clears throat> I think in general, <clears throat> I think in general, a lot of people, <laughs> except for maybe those watching the live stream, are unfamiliar with just how important uh, the soul is in relationship to the journey because we get so bogged down in this thing called life that we become very, very separate from uh, our soul. Uh, and our, our connection to it and what it is actually, um, what its correlation is to our life, which is far greater than most of us know. <clears throat> so I'm very happy to see we've got a lot of people coming in already. Thank you also for clicking on the share button to let other people know about today's live stream. And so that's what you can expect for those that are able to stick around. Uh, if you have to run and you'd like to know more about this show, and make sure you like and subscribe and you can always come back to this live stream and watch it moving forward <clears throat> and also you'll be notified <laughs> at least according to facebook's rules when i go live i have over 3,000 facebook friends but only a, a, a few maybe a hundred of them get notified um when i go live so that's a facebook thing but i'm grateful for it it's a it's a, you know it's a free service can't complain right let's see who's joined us today <clears throat> Aloha Kathy Arnold. Aloha and welcome Heather Houston. Welcome also to Phyllis Casper and Kristen Strachan. Aloha and welcome to Shelley Patricia Bamford and Kristen Rojas. Aloha Catherine. Welcome Crane. Welcome Lisa Zarniak. Aloha and welcome Mina and Kristen Strachan. Welcome Ilona. Welcome Lisa Zarniak and welcome also to Jim. Aloha and welcome to Phyllis and Jen Christie, thank you for joining. So while we're waiting for uh, Facebook to grab a few more souls, I'll continue filling in a little spare time. So Tuesday, for those who were able to join, that was a very powerful day and great wisdom and teachings. Got a lot of good feedback on that also. And if you didn't get a chance to watch Tuesday, please go back and watch it. <clears throat> uh, I had somebody contacting me yesterday through email and they were asking exactly this, today's subject matter. Say, I want to learn more about my soul. I want to learn more about soul power. What do I do? That was their question. And they were from Bangladesh. That's the first person who had contacted me from Bangladesh. <clears throat> and I told them three things. I said, buy the book called The Power of Soul. I know it's backwards in your camera. Buy the book called The Power of Soul. Second thing I told them was, because, you know, I don't know their restrictions as far as their internet and whatnot. <clears throat> I said, um, go to, and I sent them the link. I said, go to my uh, podcast. I sent them the link to my podcast on my webpage. I said, you can also go to YouTube. Kristen Rojas has done an amazing job posting a lot of my uh, previous Facebook live streams onto YouTube. There's probably over 100 videos on there now of live streams from Facebook <clears throat> and so hopefully that will uh, reach a whole new audience and start to help a whole new uh, gamut of people so this is how you can understand your soul and your soul power because each one of the live streams that I offer is filled with soul wisdom but today we're gonna be very um, finite in the, in the sharing of this wisdom so it can serve you welcome Heather Houston welcome Atena Aloha to Monica Welcome also to uh, Bari Wazowski. 
Thank you all for coming and welcome. I think I saw someone else new here. Karen White. Aloha, Karen. Welcome, Lisa Carter. Welcome, Kathy Arnold. <coughs> and welcome, Gunnar. Tuning in from Istanbul. Great to have you here, Gunnar. So let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Since this is on the subject of soul, let us start right there. And place our hands in a hand mudra position, which is called the soul light, soul service hand position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand remains gently pointed towards heaven. Welcome Don and welcome Janice. Close your eyes. Let us fully connect. I will invite in the beings of light. Welcome Amanda. <clears throat> dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, dear our beloved creator, all the beings of light, including angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, Buddhas and bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Ami Tofu, beloved Kuan Yin, beloved Ganesha, beloved Krishna, and all other beings of light, mentioned and unmentioned, dear the soul <coughs> of beloved Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, and all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes serving the planet of the light side. We love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, we respect you, and we ask most humbly and most sincerely for your presence today. We ask that you please guide this wisdom and teachings uh, that has been brought to humanity to further awaken them to their soul. We ask that each and every soul here be more awakened to their current understanding and experience so that they can move their life forward in the highest and best trajectory for their soul's journey. As appropriate, we are extremely grateful. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. We ask most humbly and most sincerely for you to please come, turn on, and we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us as we chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony. So for those tuning in for the first time, this is a mantra. It is a song. It has been translated into 42 languages. You can learn more at <coughs> lovepeaceharmony.org. And if you keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' chat, uh, she drops in the information of, of what, what I'm talking about. So let us chant, let us serve. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula. Li. La li lu la, lu la li lu la, lu la li lu la. Wo ai wo xin har ling, wo ai tran ran li, wo mi rong har mu shir shang. Xiong ai ping on a xie, Xiong ai ping on a xie. <coughs> I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> Excuse me. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. How is a Mandarin Chinese word that means perfect, complete, uh, wonderful. We say thank you a few times. The first thank you is to our beloved Creator. The second thank you is to all the beings of light who have just come to join us today. The third thank you is to our own soul. So welcome also to Najma Saeed. <coughs> welcome Diana. Welcome Lisa. Welcome also to um, M.A. Drade. And welcome Carl. Welcome Archana Dev. Aloha to Janice and Amanda Moyer. Thank you all for coming. And for those first timers, I hope you enjoy this. Welcome also Sayad Shah and Martha. So if I missed your name, forgive me. Uh, double blessings to you. This is what my teacher teaches us. He says, if I say your name, you get some virtue. If I don't say your name, you get a lot of virtue. So um, 
when I chant, and I've mentioned this before, but this is a good place to start with understanding the power of soul. I started by inviting in all the beings of light. God, Tao, Source, Jesus, Buddha, all of them. There is no separation. That's what Tuesday's live stream was about. The separation caused by different belief systems and our attachments to our belief systems over somebody else's. That creates separation. There is no oneness. So if you miss that, go back to the Tuesday live stream. And what I have noticed on a consistent basis, this is very relevant to understanding the power of soul. When I called, when I asked, Dear Divine Tao Source, please come. There are all the angels, healing angels, archangels, Buddhas, but please come. I'm sure some came. I can see sometimes. I can definitely feel. But when I chanted love, peace, and harmony, the room filled up. Standing room only. What's the difference? The source soul song of love, peace, and harmony <clears throat> is a calling tool. It has been transmitted, literally transmitted, to every soul in all universes. And it has more calling power than me asking all of them to be here. When I called and I asked all of them to come, many of them did. Many of them were too busy. They're up helping other people. But when I started chanting love, peace, and harmony, billions of souls came. Billions. How do I know? I can see. My nose was itchy as heck. I was going to ask a few people with the third eye what they can see, but it's a little too late. So I tell you this as a first start in understanding the power of soul, that when you start to work with the concept of soul, when you start to apply it in your life, it's kind of like learning a language. This is a very good analogy. An analogy means like a comparison for some uh, people who uh, first language is not English. Welcome Joey Gould. Welcome also to Dean Forbes. Welcome Candy Cornette. <clears throat> Why do I say it's like learning a new language? When I first started training uh, with my teacher, Master Shah, for those who are unfamiliar with Master Shah, um, this is an image of him here. And uh, the wisdom is in all of his books, literally. I'm going to use a lot of the wisdom from this book called Power of Soul. The Power of Soul. You can look it up. Anyway, when I first started training, and literally this, everybody's heard of the soul, right? But literally, when I first heard him talking about soul language, soul communication, da, 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 I'm like, you know, huh? It's just this is a little left field for me, right? I can sort of get it, but it was definitely left field. Welcome, Nikita McFarland. Welcome, Otstara. So he started giving examples of the soul. I'm going to give you some of those examples and start expanding on them so you have some meat to put on the bones. So this is on page 109. <clears throat> called Soul Intelligence, Wisdom, and Knowledge, uh, Chapter 6 of The Power of Soul. And this is the third paragraph. This book teaches soul intelligence. A human being's soul has many hundreds of lifetimes. Now, you may or may not accept that. That's okay. No one's trying to change your belief system. Your soul has been in many, many many different occupations. If in your past life you could have been an author, someone who writes books, you could have been a scientist, a teacher, a philosopher, a business person, a musician, an athlete, a leader of a country. You could have been a poet, a religious father, a doctor, a lawyer, or many other types of experiences. When your soul learned lessons in all these lifetimes, there is an ancient secret or an ancient statement. Qi yi kui zhang zi shi. Chinese. This can be translated as learn a lesson one time, gain wisdom in all time. This tells us that life is experience. The soul lives forever. We do not. Now, I go back to an earlier chapter. This is in... Um, <coughs> Soul Basics, Chapter 1. What is the soul? And what is the power of your soul? The soul can be defined by many different ways, by many different people. 
Master Shah asked Kevin, could you please give me a definition for what is a soul? Here was their answer. The soul, not your soul, the soul, meaning all souls, the soul is a golden light being, a golden light being. That's pretty cool. Very simple to understand, easy to explain to children, easy to understand. <clears throat> what is the power of your soul? Well, if we are golden light beings, then why doesn't it feel that way sometimes? Why does life suck sometimes? For golden light beings, why does life suck? Right? Sometimes. Life is great other times. Life is awesome sometimes. But life definitely sucks sometimes. So how is it that we are golden light beings and, and we can have this dichotomy of experiences? Where is this power of our soul if life is supposed to be so awesome and we're golden light beings? To see a soul, it goes on to say, you must open your spiritual eye. That's called third eye for a lot of people. About 10, 15% of humanity, their third eye is open. What about the other 85%? Do we have third eyes? The answer is absolutely yes. That's an aspect of your soul. Your soul sees all, knows all. Your soul is connected to the source. We are connected to the source. We are golden light beings. But we're so lost in the sauce of life that our third eyes in many cases aren't open. Our spiritual channels aren't open. These are powers of the soul. And so a lot of us, we run through life getting our tail kicked by jobs and husbands and wives and children and bosses and everything else. Health issues, karma kicks our tail in. And we get along, you know, till we're age 30, 40, 50, 60, when we start waking up and start making adjustments and start figuring out that life is more than just being miserable. And then we start delving into the spiritual journey and we look at tarot cards and we look at crystals and we, we check out all the various religions and, and we try to find something that aligns to us and our heart, try to find something that actually helps our soul to grow. And in essence, it's a process of remembering and it's a process of becoming a member of our soul family, remembering. And so these are some aspects of the soul. Now here's another um, nugget. Master Shah has many nuggets in his books. One of the nuggets is the soul is the boss. What does that mean, the soul is the boss? Well, we know that the soul, any soul, is a golden light being. And where does that golden light being come from? It comes from the source. So if we are a golden light being from the source, then why does it not feel that way sometimes? Why are we so far from that um, beautiful space. The soul is the boss. When we live life like we are the boss, like the mind is the boss, like our education is the boss, like money is the boss, pain, suffering, pain, suffering, pain, suffering. That's the result. Very simple. When I started listening to Master Shah about 10 years ago, and I'm sitting in an event with my arms crossed, watching this guy at the front of the stage talking about soul, trying to grasp why is everybody like this person, why is he so important. He, he was talking about the power of soul and how that if we simply started communicating, talking to the beings of light on a lot more common basis, talking to our own soul, when we simply started realizing that our soul is the boss and give it the reins, instead of our mind, instead of our monkey mind, instead of money being our uh, God and so forth, life gets a whole lot easier. There's a person watching now, significant financial issues, beautiful soul, nothing wrong with them, beautiful personality. They haven't released to the power of soul, not to this level necessary. Financial suffering would diminish. What are some of the characteristics of the soul? These are different bullet points. I'm just going to touch on them gently. <clears throat> Your soul, which also, in this case, we're talking about our body soul, remember. Another one sentence secret nugget. Very important. That's so important. Everything came from the source. I don't think anybody will disagree with that. That means the rock came from the source. The building that's made up of rock came from the source. The cell phone or the computer you're watching me through is made up of materials that came from the source. Everything, all the plankton in the ocean, everything came from the source. Or whatever name you want to call it, right? Creator, God, Allah, doesn't matter. 
everything coming from the source has a golden light being. Everything is a golden light being because it was birthed as a soul from the source. Really important to get that. It's like the foundation of everything. Everything came from the source. Everything is a golden light being, therefore everything has a soul. A lot of people run through life not thinking that in that way. And it's, it was the biggest aha moment for me. One of the reasons why I'm a, a well-spoken teacher now about the subject is because I went through a lot of processing and how to move my life into this new language of understanding the nature of the soul, understanding the power of soul, understanding how to communicate to soul. Okay, From the moment I heard it, it was like <clears throat> somebody set off fireworks inside my brain. I was like, oh my God, everything has a soul. That's insane. Really? Yes, everything is from source. Everything has a soul. And that's not so hard to grasp now because soul has become a much more common verbiage and much more uh, just grasp and agree to. <clears throat> However, 10 years ago, not so much. And even though it's a commonly accepted word now, the application of soul, communicating with soul, communicating with rocks, right? Communicating with cell phones, giving love to your cell phone. Who thought of that, right? That is a foreign concept. 10 years ago, this was brought up. <clears throat> and I started communicating with all the different souls. Inanimate, animate. If thoughts have a soul, I started communicating with thoughts. If any of you have never received a soul reading uh, the way I do it, you should. I call in the soul of the question. The question has a soul. Everything has a soul because everything is preceded by thought. Thought has a soul. I call in the soul of the question, the soul of the highest and best answer, the soul of all of the possibilities. So because everything has a soul, there is a massive power in the understanding and a massive power that can be gained by the communication with soul. Welcome, Jack. Welcome, Margaret Green. Welcome, Cindy Brennan. <coughs> Aloha, Hannah Moyes. Welcome, Rianne. Welcome also to Rosetta. If I missed your name, forgive me. Thank you for joining. It's easy to go off on tangents with this subject matter. It's like it's 20 books worth. So if you need to learn more or you want to learn more, just go to uh, Ma uh, Amazon and type in Master Shah. You'll see 20 plus books. Many places to start. I would start with The Power of Soul. <clears throat> souls have consciousness and intelligence. Even the souls of a plankton, even the soul of a jellyfish, even the soul of the cells of, um, of anything. The cells of something have a consciousness. It has been validated by science that in the petri dish, the scientist can uh, think something and the cells will respond in the appropriate manner. Literally, they can move cells from one side of the petri dish to the other. They can, they can do this in science. Everything down to the uh, smallest energy and matter has a consciousness. Why? Because everything has a soul. Everything is a golden light being infused with the uh, consciousness of creator. Now, I'm trying to move from that common sense explanation to how to utilize that wisdom to start bringing shift into your life, understanding the power of your soul. Because when you really grasp, and I mean really grasp, that everything has a soul, you can move mountains, mountains. Having trouble getting a job? Having trouble with your finances? Does your finances have a soul? Absolutely. Does all the people that in your ancestors harm have a soul? Maybe you and your ancestors ripped people off, took their businesses, took their land. <clears throat> There's souls involved here. Got to do deep forgiveness. Everything has a soul. Uh, everything, everything, everything can be impacted when you start to grasp this. We think that we have to do, be, have in that order. You do something, you be something, then you can have what you want. Wrong. It all starts up here first. We are consciousness first. We are soul first. When you deal with things at the level of soul, you can sit in your room and create miracles. You can sit in your room and move mountains because you're doing it at the level of soul first. I'm not talking about mind over matter. That is just, you know, that's last century stuff. 
okay? This is soul over matter. <clears throat> when you deal with forgiveness, do forgiveness. Forgiveness is removing of blockages on your soul journey. Your soul is the boss. If you try to do something at the mind level and you try to force it in this direction, I'm going to do this no matter what, and you push, push, push. If that's not the direction that your soul knows is right for you and your journey, your soul will block it. Sorry. And you're like, I don't know what it is. I have a PhD. I have this. I have that. I've got all this knowledge. Da, 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 da. If you're not going the right direction, your soul will block you. The soul is the boss. Soul is powerful. You must learn to work with it, not against it. Souls have emotions. Ha! Huh, who would have thought that? I read that the first time. I'm like, are you kidding me? Souls have emotions? Yes. Souls can be very sad. Souls can be extremely joyful. We're not talking about human emotions. Can you imagine your soul being very sad? Sure. Maybe your soul is sad. Maybe you're sad <clears throat> and your soul is sad because you don't wake up. It tries to give you, here, here, here's a beautiful thing to change you from this sadness. Here's another beautiful thing to change you from this sadness. But we stay in our place of sadness. So the soul is, is not sad because you're sad. It's sad because you're not waking up. That's an example. We think our soul has the same emotions as us. No. Our soul has great intelligence. Many, many lifetimes of wisdom. <clears throat> you could be amazed how much your soul knows. Welcome, Dimple. Welcome also to uh, Trina and Danta. Souls have amazing memory. You know this. You walk through a room. You see somebody. Something about them is just really intriguing. You just There's a connection. You don't know what it is. Maybe it turns out to be a soulmate. Different time, you walk by somebody on the street and you feel like going the other direction an additional 20 feet. Something about that person feels like chalk on a chalkboard. And you never met the person. Souls have amazing memories, okay? They know good and bad people. Why don't we recognize that's a soul attribute? We need to move. Uh, this is about changing the brain to a new language. We need to literally walk through life from the perspective and understanding of soul. Life will get much easier. <clears throat> souls have flexibility. Souls communicate with other souls naturally. Huh, think about that. We're having a conversation with this person in front of us. Our soul is having a conversation with probably two or three other people in the room at the same time. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Hey, Mary, how you doing? Long time no see. You know, I know my, uh, my physical body here is, hasn't met you yet, but I'm told that we're going to meet you in about a year. But it's great to see you. I'll see if I can set it up with heaven where we meet you in about a year. Get that karma cleaned up that we talked about. Right? Your soul's having this conversation with other souls. Your soul knows who you're going to meet. It knows why you're going to meet them. Your soul knows. And one of the problems is we are not attuned to our soul. So we fumble through life. How do we attune to our soul? Meditation, practices, talking to our soul on a daily basis, listening when it says, don't do that. Okay? When we start soul communicating, when we start, you know, how do I do this? Pick up one of Master Shah's books. Pick up all 21. There are plenty of, uh, of, of courses. I teach courses. 140 masters teach courses. <clears throat> this is not a belief system or religion. This is common sense. This is soul wisdom. No matter what your belief system, everyone gets a benefit out of soul wisdom. Welcome, Erica. <clears throat> your soul travels. We all know that, right? But where does your soul travel to? How come you don't remember that? Because we're disconnected from our soul. I, I can literally tell the difference. Uh, in my, uh, when I sleep at night, if I put my calligraphy cards in a circle around my bed, the calligraphy cards carry massive high frequency connectivity to heaven. Always, always my dreams are smooth, easy, nice, no drama whatsoever. My soul's having a good time. When I don't put them around my bed, I don't have nightmares, things like that. They're just strange, you know, strange dreams. Just, you know, it's just not the same. Why? Because my soul is protected when the cards are around the bed. 
when the calligraphy cards that carry the higher frequencies protect, put a frequency field around me at night. You can do the same thing with, with you know, high-level books, put them around you. <coughs> Common sense wisdom, soul wisdom. Okay? Souls can protect your life. Your own soul can protect you, literally. Other souls, including angels, saints, spiritual beings, guides, enlightened teachers, and the divine, our beloved creator, can protect your life. How many of you, so I teach my students, one of the first classes I teach them, their homework, from the very first class, when I teach them the open spiritual channels. There's an open spiritual channels course coming up in about four or five weeks. <clears throat> first class, I teach them, always offer your food and your drink to the soul world. Dear God, Tao, Source, Creator, Jesus, Buddha, Mother Mary, Heaven, Mother Earth, uh, all the angels, please enjoy this food first. I offer my gratitude for your presence in my life. You save my life, you guide me, you protect me, uh, you, 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 know, you do so many things for me that I'm unaware of, but I know you're there for me. I'm so grateful. Please enjoy this food and nourishment first. You do that from your heart. Oh, the souls are so happy. Oh, my, my beautiful son. I'm so grateful for your honoring of us. Why is that important? You are connecting your soul more and more to other souls of the light side. Do you think that will serve you when you're sleeping? Yes. Do you think that will serve you when you're eating? Hey, bless your food. There could be poison in your food. There could be bacteria in your food. There could be negative energy from the person that prepared your food. They could have came in to that kitchen that day, prepared food in great anger, chopping down around my wife. Da, 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 da. They put such hatred into the food. You come to the table. They deliver your meal. You offer it to heaven. Heaven comes and blesses the food. And the soul of all the energy and matter, because everything has a soul, of all the energy and matter of that food has now been shifted from negative energy to positive energy. People do not pay attention. All of this is deeper understanding of the power of your soul to make a difference in your life. How hard is that to bless your food every meal, <clears throat> to offer it to all the beings of light? To offer your drink to the beings of light. Actually, it takes a little practice. I tell you, for the first year or two, I was like, oh, the food was already in my mouth, already had a fork full in my mouth. Oh, I forgot again. Patterns, habits, because we're so stuck in our mind, we're so stuck in everything except what is the truth in our life. Accept that. So, the power of soul is extraordinary and it's like learning a language. You just learn and you learn and you learn and you apply and you apply and you apply. All the different places you can do soul communication, all the different places you acknowledge heaven, Tao, source. Because trust me, it's not a bed when you're on your knees at night and that's not the only time you connect with them. It's not when you have a near death car accident and you connect with them and say thank you. That's far too many of us are in that pattern. You know, once every Sunday. Oh, thank you, God. And then we go about our business and have a miserable life. We are far from our soul, but our soul is never far from us. We are far from divine Tao source and all the beings of light, but they are never far from us. Why are we far from them? We're operating out of this guy instead of from our heart, from our soul. Very important. Souls follow spiritual laws and principles. We, we often do not, but souls do. Your soul is eternal. Everybody knows that one. Many souls, many, but not all of them, they yearn to be enlightened. That's, you know, a whole other subject. The soul is the boss. You start to understand that now. We'll do a mantra here in a little while. Master Shah has here on page uh, 10 of this book. The purpose of the physical life and the soul life. What is the purpose of life? Those who have uh, witnessed and learned Master Shah's wisdom learn this. When I first read this, I was like, you ever have an experience where, I don't know how do you put it, it's a physical experience where you know, you're you just blown away and, and there's tingling all over your body when you just, you hear something and you're just tingling and you're like, oh my God, this is like the, the most amazing thing I've ever heard. When I read this for the very first time, 
because I've been searching a couple different masters, searching how many books, right? I went through all the stuff you guys are going through, <clears throat> the crystals and the tarot cards and all, you know, the, the psychics and blah, 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 blah. You check out all of them, right? See what, what resonates. When I read this next sentence, it was just, it just blew me away. Because in one sentence was the answer to the million year question, what is the purpose of life? And Master Shah wrote it in his book. He said, the purpose of life is to serve. The purpose of our physical life is to serve our soul life. Oh, oh my goodness. That was just like, wow. The purpose of life is to serve. Now, I remember around age 28, I uh, became a legal guardian for a 13-year-old. Ha! Oh, was that a learning curve? Okay, got my butt kicked. Um, but why did I do that? Because my heart was of service. I wanted to do the right thing. You know, this young man, his mother died, his grandma didn't want him, da 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 Okay, I'll, I'll help this young man. <clears throat> but I got my tail kicked. Um, it was a good learning curve. But why did I do it? My heart was of service. Well, I came to learn that service can have many different forms. It doesn't have to be that you have to turn your life upside down and take on somebody else, adopt a kid, anything like that. Okay? Um, but many of us, we go through our different comprehension and understanding of what is service. Our soul understands that it is here to experience life, to uh, reach enlightenment so that it can return back to the source from which it was birthed. And the process from here to there can be painless or painful. The painful aspects uh, shows up in our life in almost every case because uh, our soul and we have heaven's teams, they bring into our life opportunities, watch the verding, opportunities to reverse conditions of unpleasantness that came to us and is coming to us because of what we or possibly our ancestors have done in previous soul experiences. We could have done unpleasant things because we were not conscious, we were not aware of our soul. And so we do unpleasant choices, karma, and it comes back into our life as an opportunity to be much, much happier. But we don't see it from the soul perspective. We see it from the mind perspective. From the, oh, no one loves me. God doesn't like me. Why do you spite me, God? Why do you bring such pain into my life? Right? We point outside of us. We don't take responsibility. Soul power says, ah, I see this very unpleasant experience in my life. I, I'll acknowledge that it's definitely not pleasant. I don't like it. But I will also acknowledge there is a reasonable possibility that I or my ancestors have done some very unpleasant things to others that have brought this unpleasant experience into my life. I will apply love. I will apply deep and authentic forgiveness for the suffering I am experiencing now has absolutely been brought upon others. And when you do that, at the level of soul, which is where everything resides, first, we are a physical being having a experience on behalf of our soul to serve our soul our physical life is to serve the soul life <clears throat> another one sentence secret in master shah's books the ancestors plant the seeds the descendants enjoy the shade ancestors plant the seeds the descendants enjoy the shade it's an allegory. What's it mean? It means if our ancestors plant seeds of good and service and value, helping others, serving others, we have a trouble-free life. Money's not a problem. Everything's easy. Everything's hunky-dory. I doubt any of you watching this have that kind of experience. Those that have those kinds of experiences aren't watching spiritual programs. They're kind of lost in the la-la land of niceness. Some are, thank goodness, but most of the people watching this are getting their tail kicked by life. They're here to try to give some guidance and some answers. They're trying to figure this stuff out. <clears throat> and that's good because the wisdom is you and or your ancestors may 
have made some unpleasant choices. And those unpleasant choices are recorded at the level of soul. They're recorded at your Akashic record. And they are released in this physical experience that is here to serve your, your soul journey, right? What does that mean? Your physical experience is here to serve your soul journey. Your physical experience is here to unwind some of the unpleasant choices by solving them with love and forgiveness. Create positivity, create benefit, create value to humanity, thereby creating much, much more enjoyable future life experiences. The power of your soul is extraordinary. It can make your life substantially less miserable. Are you communicating with it? moment by moment every day are you communicating with the divine the Tao, the creator the source are you communicating with your angels your heavens teams or are you just begging them what is the difference between communication and begging please help me or are you saying i'm so grateful for your service i know you're helping me please forgive me for having uh, far less gratitude all i'm doing is complaining I'm complaining I don't have enough. I'm complaining this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. A lot of complaining. How much gratitude? What do you think you would like to hear in your physical ears? Do you want to hear complaining? Do you want to hear gratitude? Soul communication is also important. When you're talking to all the beings of light and God and so forth, are you complaining or are you offering gratitude? There is an ancient statement that everything that you offer, you get back 100%. <laughs> so now which one do you want to offer to heaven gratitude or complaining okay remember everything is connected so start taking responsibility for your communication especially to those in the soul world the ancestors plant the trees the descendants enjoy the shade let's take that a little bit further Many of us fail to realize that our ancestors impact us. I had trouble with this one. I grew up Christian uh, household, uh, not devoted, not you know everyday church and, and Bible thumping, but you know I grew up with that teaching, and um, they didn't really talk a lot about ancestors. So when I came across this wisdom and teachings, you know a lot of it resonated with my heart, resonated with my soul. I immediately started working with it and, and, and have seen amazing results. And, and I teach those, and the people that follow the wisdom, they see amazing results. Some take some takes short time, some takes a lot of time, but always there are results if you do the efforts. Um, and but I had trouble with this one about the ancestors. Like, really? So you're telling me that if my great great grandpa was a son of a beat, now I'm going to suffer? Well, that's not fair, right? Cross my arms. That's not fair. Everybody has that kind of response. Just because we're oblivious does not mean it's true. How many people complain when our great, great, great grandpappy helped hundreds and thousands of people, took the lepers and went over there and served them? Didn't care if he was going to die or not. Just gave him unconditional service. Heaven records everything. So if our great, great, great grandpappy was a good soul, helped many people, helped many souls, not just people, just souls, animals, could have helped many animals, then that also reflects the ancestors plant the, the seeds. We are the ones that are enjoying the shade or the lack thereof. <clears throat> so from the soul perspective, how do we deal with that? We ask forgiveness on behalf of our ancestors for anything that's happening in our life that we're not enjoying. We offer our gratitude and love to all the ancestors for all the wonderful things happening in our life. We do it both ways because no matter how good or bad your life, we have ancestors that have done wonderful things. We have ancestors that have done not so wonderful things. We always offer our gratitude and we always do forgiveness on their behalf and our behalf. You know, a lot of people like to put uh, life outside of them. They like to put the problems outside of them. A lot of people like to think that um, they're not in control of their life, that uh, shit just happens to them. I know as a master teacher, I'm not supposed to say that word, but it just came out. So it's the truth. It doesn't just happen. Nothing just happens. That, that's, just, that's just another way of saying there's no responsibility here with me. Nothing just happens accidentally. Everything is, is, is in alignment 
with the magical web of life. We are individual souls energetically crisscrossing each other. There's nothing about life's web of energies, life's web of souls that is accidental. So if something happens, you can trust that there is a source to it. It doesn't mean it was destined to happen. It meant that it happened because the energetic lines of a bunch of souls crossed and it brought that condition. It could have been ancestral stuff. It could have been stuff that was brought to you for a lesson. It could have been any number of reasons, but no, nothing happens accidentally. And when you look at everything, when you start to look at everything from this higher perspective, from the power of your soul, you can deal with it dramatically differently. Something just happens, right? That's could be judged as painful or uh, irritating or angry or whatever, right? We can have that response. Uh, most of us do. And it's okay to have it on a momentary basis, but you want to try to pull yourself out of a knee-jerk response as quickly as possible. And then once you pull yourself out of that knee-jerk auto response, look at it from the soul. Okay, why did this happen? From the soul perspective. It's got to be something that, you know, everything lined up in a certain way. What is the potential lesson here? How can I derail this, minimize the impact of this so that it doesn't impact me emotionally as much as it currently did and that I don't let it impact my future emotionally because it will if you stick to it the same way with old patterns. Remember, what you put your focus on is what is you're going to get in your future as well. So soul and soul power allows us to address things directly. All right. This experience is obviously from some sort of uh, either lesson that needs to be learned or karmic experience, something that needs to be cleaned up. I would do forgiveness practice around this. I may have brought this condition upon others or my ancestors may have. I will um, do a deep forgiveness. I will ask Kevin Dow and Source, my creator, for forgiveness and all the souls that may have been harmed. I will choose to look at this as a learning opportunity and do my best to not make the same mistakes that might have led to this condition again. Uh, and I will disassociate from having you know, an irritating emotion around it moving forward so that in my future I'm not manifesting more of what I don't want. Soul allows you to look at things that way. Mind does not. Mind keeps us in old patterns in which we reproduce more of what we don't want. So your power of your soul can help you immensely. Again, for those that tuned in a little bit late, this is some wisdom from this book called The Power of Soul. Just some wisdom. This thing is chock full of, of examples after examples of great, great, great stuff. Okay. So there's the practice here, a very simple one. For those that are not familiar. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. My phone just tried to cut itself off, so I'm just clearing the blockages. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome, Kari. So the wisdom I'm sharing today is for everybody. I'm not doing individual soul readings. If anybody wants to receive a soul reading, <clears throat> they can connect me directly. Um, I'll do an example of one soul reading, and it, and it won't be for anyone in specific. Uh, but this is a good example of the power of soul. Okay. So there is a person watching right now <clears throat> that has been contacting me a lot about uh, financial blockages. And they're saying, you know, my life is still the same. Are you doing anything to help me? So I'm going to do a soul reading for this person. And it can apply to all of you. The wisdom will help everybody here. Okay. <clears throat> when you hear, what I want you to pay attention to is all of the souls that I call so that I can receive information to offer guidance. This is not a showcase of me. This is the showcase that I'm trying to get you to see is that everything has a soul. And if you actually tune in and you take time to practice, meditate, whatever, you can receive amazing information. Okay. So deal with the soul of this person I'm thinking of. Please come to the soul of their individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. I love you, honor you, respect you. Bow my head to you. Could you please come? Dear the soul of 
all of the financial conditions that this person is currently experiencing please come to the soul of why this person is experiencing significant financial blockages please come to the soul of the highest and best guidance that can assist this person in soul communication please come to the soul of the highest and best guidance for their future long-term financial success uh, uh, removing money problem success please come to the soul of the Akashic records specifically for this person that I'm thinking of and the root causes of their uh, financial blockages please come I love you all honor you all deeply respect and appreciate you all bow my head to you all I ask most humbly and sincerely for uh, for you to, to choose a spokesperson borrow my mouth allow me to share and flow the wisdom for all of those to hear and for this individual to hear I am very grateful thank you thank you thank you so now I will do what's called a flow this is what I do in my soul readings <clears throat> and this is uh, messages from the soul world so this is not my my mind talking <laughs> how this is the soul of the individual you have chosen dear one I love you I love you more than you know you spend far too much time in concern and worry and not enough time in gratitude and love it is not that you cannot have that which you want I have brought to you several times several conditions in which you could have success one of the dilemmas is actually the location you are in the chi field in the home itself needs to be adjusted try to do trade with somebody who knows how to realign chi fields known in your world as feng shui additionally every day spend a minimum of four hours in gratitude purposefully wherever you go find things to be grateful for you must cultivate a heart of gratitude this you think you have been but you will discover and by dedicating four hours every day to this mindset that there is not a aspect of your life that will not change four hours may seem like a lot but how does 12 to 14 hours a day in despair feel to you which one do you think will be easier to attain you might be challenged to find four hours of things to be grateful for but when you connect you will discover it is much easier than you thought what I wish you to pay attention to my beloved one is that when you are in this state truly engulfed in it as a natural part of your daily being things and possibilities will come to you ideas and people will come to you opportunities and more will naturally occur this is because energetically you are opening a portal of allowance it is when you are in a place of despair fear and worry that this allowance this opportunity this service that we in heaven are always trying to send you that I as your soul am trying to allow you to receive cannot get through people think that it is outside of them the problem it is not open your heart my beloved one I wish very much for you to have the prosperity and abundance you so deserve follow this guidance you will discover that it is of great value to you do not 
let this guidance disappear once things shift for you. Maintain it even more so regardless of the job, career, or activity that you partake in. It is the consistency of this gratitude that will change your life permanently. I am your soul. It has been my honor to speak through this one on your behalf. Ha ha ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> thank you uh, to all the souls who have come. Please respectfully return. So that's an example of soul communication. Very different than psychic, very different than anything else you might know. Many, many years of communicating uh, and understanding soul communication, understanding the power of soul. Many, many years of practicing led me to receive these titles of master teacher, blah, blah, blah. It's all for service. As you can see, that wisdom was beneficial for everybody. It is so important to realize that our soul, this was this person's soul that gave that message. How important is that to comprehend? This whole conversation is about understanding the power of soul. This whole conversation. That's just a representative example of the wisdom of the soul to help us. Now granted, it takes a little while to get that degree of clarity, but if our heart was open, if our mind was open, we could truly be in a place of open heart and ask, please tell me what to do. Your soul could easily tell you, be grateful all the time. Two or three words, be grateful all the time. We can hear that. We don't need someone like Master Paul to give this, you know, four or five paragraphs of response. We can hear that simple response. Your soul can tell you these things. You have to take the time to tune in. This one hour live stream, literally, if applied, can change your entire life. But why do we go about the day and apply a little bit and then forget it? Why? Because we are patterned to operate from our mind, not our heart, not our soul. Which is why it's important to align to a wisdom, a teaching, a, a practice, a course, something that keeps you on track on a consistent basis. Okay, That's why I'm where I'm at, because I found a teacher who brought very high level wisdom and, and put me on a path and said, you know, don't change your belief system, but do this to align to your soul. Your life will get better. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Worked out pretty good for me. So find a teacher, find a path that keeps you on a very specific trajectory to align to your soul more and more, away from your mind towards your heart. This is called soul over matter, not mind over matter. And when you start moving towards that area, you're going to be much, much, much happier. For those new, I will be teaching some courses coming up in the next four or five weeks. Um, there will be a 52-week self-healing course that employs all of these wisdoms for self-healing emotions, mental, body, uh, physical, of course. Um, uh, you know, contact me. You'll learn more about it. Um, there is an open spiritual channels course coming up in five or six weeks where you learn how to do these things. It's not going to happen in a 12-week period of time. That's the course link, 12 weeks. But uh, I've done it twice already, and the students uh, have definitely a lot of positive things to say. And in almost every case, there is substantial, noticeable shift in the awakening of their spiritual channels, third eye, things like that. Um, there is a third course that will be offered pretty soon here for uh, helping uh, cancer patients to recover uh, using the power and the wisdom of soul and spiritual healing blessings. So keep your eyes open for those. Uh, stay tuned. Contact me if you have questions. If you want individual soul readings, I do offer them 75 for a half hour, uh, double that for an hour. And it's question and answer based, so have your questions ready. Okay? Um, I'm pretty busy during the week. Weekends is about the best time for me. So Kristen has posted my name and phone number in there. I'm happy to serve you. I will see you on Tuesday, three hours later than this time. My, my time zones are listed on my Facebook page. You can see uh, when I come back. So I'll be here Tuesday at noon Hawaii time. So 
Thank you to Divine Tao Source. Thank you, Master Shah, my spiritual teacher and father. Thank you to all the beings of light, angels, healing angels, archangels, all the masters, sinning masters, lamas, sifas, gurus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, Jesus, Mother Mary, Amitofu, Kuan Yin, Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, all the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. Thank you to all your individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, to my heavens, team, guides, angels, and saints. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.